Bitcoin has fallen through a trap door over the past month, just as crypto was becoming more widely accepted as an asset class. So, it was a brutal May where Bitcoin lost about 37% and is now down about 43% from the mid-April peak. The fall seems to have dampened the institutional demand. So, where does Bitcoin go from here? Well, let's take a look. Bitcoin's future is rocky. Recently, China attacked electricity usage, which was a warning near the highs. The SEC is also threatening to beef up regulations. And at the same time, you have a technical problem of so-called influencers getting everybody in, including institutions. But this is only creating weak holders. We're potentially seeing the creation of a new asset class. And with the prospect of inflation, buyers are starting to add Bitcoin to their portfolios. But be careful as there are different kinds of inflation. Bitcoin is like copper and acts as a risk-on inflation hedge, whereas gold is viewed as a safe haven or a risk-off asset. As for inflation, good inflation is when demand pulls it. And that's what Bitcoin, copper, and oil hedge. And then there's inflation where supply is choked. In this economy, we can see this with shortages of computer chips and some commodities and raw materials like lumber. In these instances, you may want to use gold as a hedge. Although the future may look better with institutional money flowing into crypto and Bitcoin, what does the immediate picture look like for Bitcoin? Well, let's take a look. And we're taking a look at a two-year weekly chart on Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. And this is the best proxy I can find for Bitcoin. And the symbol in the upper left you can see is GBTC using StockCharts.com. Now in the main price chart going way over here to the lower left, you can see that that move from that bottom all the way up here to the peak at that time took a handful of months. But from this peak to this bottom was almost a year and then it was another several months period before we finally picked up enough speed to head on up here. My point being is that the run up is much much quicker than the recovery so that's what I'm expecting here from this top. We're heading on down we have been for the last couple of months or so and we're running into the 50 MA so we may hit to ride on that for a while but Ultimately, I think that Bitcoin is going to continue down. Not sure exactly where, and we'll watch that. But you can see in the lower portion of your chart, which is the MACD, you can see that the fast line crossed through the slow line, fast line being the black line, and the slow line being the red line. That crossover happened a couple of months ago when we've been heading on down, and it's picking up some speed here. So there's a decent separation between the fast line and the slow line, which means that this is going to go sideways at best. Most likely downward, but sideways at best. And I think there's plenty of time that you're going to need before it repairs and recovers and makes another move up. We'll have some uh, sawtoothing on the way down, in my humble opinion, but this is not a bottom. This is not a sign of a bottom, even though we have this hitch right here at the 50 MA. Now you can go up into the upper portion of the chart and see the RSI, Relative Strength Index. This topping process here took a number of months, and we headed on down, and we're only a few months into the downtrend, so I don't think the recovery has started yet. But go back here, you can see the topping process at this point, then the downtrend, and the recovery took a long time before it finally gained enough steam to head back up. So... Even though I think it's going to take a long time, we'll check in with this every once in a while. I'll let you know when I think things are starting to perk up. But for now, you have to practice what? Patience. And for today, that's Chew Dog Charts. Thank you.